How's it, everyone? Welcome back to another racket review right here on Open Court. I'm Kent, and today I got a special racket to review for you guys. This is a very rare and exclusive racket from Japan. This is the Yonex Regna 100. Let's check it out. So first of all, I want to give a quick shout out to my friend Siu. He's the one who let me borrow this racket. This racket, as you guys know, is very hard to come across. It's exclusive to Japan, but it is available in limited quantities here in the US. I think only Tennis Warehouse might stock it. So it's very hard to come by, and it's about three, four, maybe even $500 for a racket, depending on where you get it. So thank you so much, Siu, for letting me borrow this racket for this review. I wouldn't have been able to get my hands on this otherwise, so thank you. So the Yonex Regna 100 carries over a lot of the same technologies and features that are included in the other Yonex rackets like the E-Zone V-Core and the most recent Percept. It still has that unique trademarked isometric head size. That increases the, the size of the sweet spot. It actually makes it a little bit more rectangular, gives you a little bit more of that uh, real estate to hit a good solid shot. The isometric head size has been Yonex trademark for many, many years. This also includes the n -amed technology. I found out it's actually pronounced n -amed. it's not NAMD, but basically it's like a special type of carbon um, structure inside the frame that allows it to not stiffen up quite as much. So as you know, when you strike a ball with a really fast swing and you're trying to hit a heavy ball, the faster you swing and the faster you make contact, the frame will actually stiffen up a bit. But this n -amed carbon is supposed to actually have a little bit more give, a little bit more flexibility to reduce the stiffness, but also to increase the power and the energy return. And lastly, it also features a unique weave material here in the throat. And this is supposed to also increase the torsional stability. So when you hit slightly off center, it, the racket's not gonna twist as much in your hand. This weave in the throat will prevent it from twisting, giving you a little bit more stability, a little bit more energy return. But for those of you who know about the Regna series, you know that the prominent feature about this racket is that it's handcrafted per racket. It's not mass produced in a factory like many of the other manufacturers rackets. Yonex already has very strict uh, spec tolerances. That's why they have good quality control. And that is especially true with the Regna series. Obviously they still use some machines to manufacture the racket, but each racket is monitored by a craftsman to make sure that the specs are exactly what is listed on the racket itself. Because of that, only I heard about 250 of these rackets are produced every month, so they're available in very limited quantity, hence the expensive price tag. So let's take a quick look at the specs of the Regna 100. So here are the specs of the Regna 100, and as you guys can see, they're pretty much in line with most other tweener rackets, 100 square inches. The 295 grams is a bit lower on the static weight. Most of these tweeners weigh at least 300, but the beam is on the thinner side, so it'll get a little bit more control than like a pure drive. And it's a 1619 open pattern. That RA is a little bit on the stiffer side, but not too stiff. And the swing weight is very low, 318, probably due to that low static weight. All right, so now let's get into my full thoughts on the Regna 100, the pros and cons. But before that, if you guys are not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you guys overhead smash that subscribe button to keep the reviews coming. So let's start with the pros of the Yonex Regna 100 version 3. Just as with most 100 square inch frames, this Regna packs a punch. I had so much power on my forehand swings and the sweet spot was generous so I could generate pace on shots even hit slightly off center. My favorite shot with the Regna 100 was my return of serve. When I teed off on a second serve on my forehand, my opponents pretty much had no chance. I hit so many return winners with this racket. Even just rallying from the baseline was fun. I could generate pace on my flat backhands as well as push my opponent around. The n -amp technology, which gives the frame a little more flexibility, really came into effect on those aggressive ground strokes. This racket does feel on the stiffer side as the Regna series doesn't have any special dampening technology like VDM or some other Yonex frames. However, it didn't feel so stiff that it was uncomfortable and it didn't feel like the racket was sapping power from the swings. A lot of times, special technologies integrated into rackets are a bit of a gimmick 
but in this case I think the n -Amd really does what it's supposed to and keeps the Regna's power generation intact. Volleys are also very solid because of the n -Amd technology. Punch volleys and overheads had easy power and low volleys were easy to dig up because of the added pace. I was really surprised at how much I liked this racket on touch volleys. Like I mentioned earlier, the Regna does feel a bit stiff, but that gave me the impact response I need to hit my drop shots, angle volleys, and placement shots. Every shot struck in the center felt very satisfying and I could control my shots and drop them where I wanted. The balance is pretty even between the head and handle, but the racket still felt maneuverable enough that I could get it in position to flick my wrist and hit angle volley winners. This is a great servant volley racket as many hundred square inch frames are, and this racket is very stable despite its low static weight. I think that weave technology in the throat has something to do with it, but usually rackets that are sub 300 grams do twist a little bit, but I didn't experience that at all with this Regna. That brings me to the serves. The Regna 100 packs a wallop on the flat serve. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a hard time controlling my flat serve, so my percentage wasn't great. But when I struck it center and it went in, this is some of the best flat serves I've hit in a while. The overall light static weight made bringing it over my head and pronating on the kick serves fairly easy as well. This racket doesn't have any special spin technology built into it, but I could still generate decent spin on my kickers. My slice serve was the only serve I struggled with. I'm not sure why, but I missed so many slice serves into the net. The Regna feels like it has a low launch angle off the serve, which I didn't really notice on the ground strokes. I had to toss a bit higher and further out in front of the baseline to get my slice serves to clear the net. But after this adjustment, my slice serves started going in, and overall, I had so much fun serving with the Regna and holding serve felt very easy. I would say the Regna 100 is a pretty forgiving racket because of its 100 square inch head and very large sweet spot. Anyone looking for easy power and a manageable weight will enjoy this racket. The open string pattern gives the Regna a slightly higher launch angle for easy net clearance, but the string pattern is not so open that it will fly the ball to the fence if I swing aggressively. The Regna had a very nice balance of power control, spin, and feel. I really like this frame's feel especially because it reminded me of rackets from the past with more of a crisp and firm impact. Rackets these days are so focused on dampening to protect players' arms, and I get that, but for players like me who don't have arm issues and rely on a touch and finesse oriented game, these frames are a blessing, but with anything worth having in life, this racket comes with a cost, and that brings me to the cons. So getting into the cons of the Regna 100 version 3, the cost and limited availability are some of the biggest cons. This racket is very expensive and it's hard to justify spending upwards of $400 on one racket. They are also in limited quantities outside of Japan, so it would be hard to get your hands on one in the first place, and if you buy it on the secondary market, the price will likely be inflated. Something to think about is that one of the main draws of the Regna is that the construction of each racket is overseen by a quality control specialist, so every Regna that is produced will exactly match the specs written on the racket, which means a lot of players will want two of these rackets because they'll know the rackets will play the same. But if you want two Regnas, First of all, you have to find two on sale, and second, that's probably going to cost you around 800 bucks. This is a premium racket that not everyone will have access to, and that's just the reality players will have to accept. Second, this is a controversial one, but I personally don't care much for the stock leather grip that all Regnas come with. I've never really been a fan of leather grips because they hurt my hand after long matches. Even with an overgrip, I start to develop blisters after a couple of hours. I know it's probably because I'm gripping the racket too hard, but when you volley, you have to grip it tight so the racket doesn't twist in your hand and you can hit a solid volley. Loose grips should only be used on serves and ground strokes. Next con I noticed was that I had a difficult time keeping slices low. The open pattern launched a lot of my slices high and the opposing net person could poach and hit that volley down. Whenever I tried to chip slice returns, I ended up sending the return long because I tried to catch it early on the rise, and when I tried to slice wide toward the sidelines, my slices landed inches outside the doubles line because the slice was clearing the net at a higher trajectory. Slicing is a big part of my game, and when I can't use it with confidence, that affects my ability to approach the net or stay in the point with defensive slices. Apart from these few cons, I don't have any issues with the Regna 100. I love the feel because it reminded me of a time when racket companies weren't obsessed with dampening everything. I love the easy power and pace I could generate on my ground strokes, and I liked how easily I could play my serve and volley game with this racket. 
and also it's very stable for a sub 300 gram racket which did surprise me. So now, who is the Yonex Regna 100 for? It's for rich people. Okay, in all seriousness, it's for players who want a power-oriented, stable, and firm-feeling racket, but you will have to shell out the cash to buy it. This feels like any other power frame. I'm honestly surprised by its stability, considering it weighs less than 300 grams, but the Regna series feels great in terms of response. And also the paint job is gorgeous, it has a classic feel, and it's one of my favorite 100 square inch rackets. I typically like something smaller, which is why I would love to try the 98 version, so I hope I can somehow get my hands on that. But what do you guys think about the Regna series? Have you tried it? I know it's expensive, but if you've tried it, let us know in the comments your thoughts on this premium Yonex racket. Thank you for watching this review of the Yonex Regna 100 racket right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on an open court.